mother-in-law excludes me from a family gathering and uploads images on Facebook so I excluded her from my kid's life. So I haven't really been on the best of terms when it comes to my mother-in-law, but despite that we had always behaved in a civilized manner and have tried to reel in the absolute displeasure of each other's company. She hadn't liked me from the very start because I come from a poor family that had to survive in a trailer. When my mother-in-law found out about me dating her son she tried to get him to break up with me but, thankfully he had the wits to make his own decisions and he told her off for meddling in his love life. Now three years later she still hadn't gotten over her hatred of me but nonetheless she could tolerate me being in the same room as her because of her son. As my husband had clearly told her, if she doesn't accept me in her house then she is going to lose him too. This has helped calm the water down a little and make the air easier for me to breathe. But it didn't completely fix things and I was still being subjected to sarcastic comments here and there. But that much I could handle because I didn't want my husband to break off from his family because of me. As long as things were civil and no one was disrespecting me in an outright manner I could handle the mother-in-law. But a few weeks ago things got out of hand. My mother-in-law had called my husband to tell him that she was planning to throw a dinner party for the whole family. She told him that the only reason she called was to notify him before he heard it from his siblings. She said that although the party was being hosted for the whole family, my husband and I weren't invited. She said she is willing to respect me if he insists but she couldn't have me in the same room as her other children, especially when her youngest was going to introduce them to his GF. My husband felt very disrespected after hearing it and rightfully so. What kind of mother just calls her son to tell him she was throwing a party which he wouldn't be invited to? That was not only hurtful, but it was also belittling. When he told me about it I was furious and told him that she had gone too far this time. It was fine as long as the target of her annoying behavior was me because she wasn't really the woman who gave me birth and even though I grew up in poverty, my mom was the best mom I could have asked for. Even now she makes sure to invite us over every few weeks and dots on my husband like he's her own son and not just an in-law. The sheer difference between two women amazes me sometimes and I never thought that my mother-in-law would go to such lengths to make someone feel like a no-good, but that was not all. Few days later my husband received the picture she had sent him and it was his whole family sitting down at the dinner table and eating. It was totally uncalled for and at that moment all I thought was that my mother-in-law had failed as a mother in her life. I told my husband that day that he should stop talking to her and there's no reason for us to put up with her crap. We don't have to go to her house just to have someone to call his family. I told him that we are enough and if he ever needs to connect with my father-in-law then we could just invite him over to our house or take him out for dinner. We don't need to see that woman's face ever again. He agreed with me and said that it's about time he accepts reality and moves on. We didn't even think about getting our revenge or doing anything that would hurt my mother-in-law just as much as she'd hurt us. But apparently God had other plans. Yesterday I found out that I'm actually 7 pregnant. It was the best news we had gotten in a while and my husband and I were celebrating like maniacs. Our happiness seemed like never-ending and finding out that I'm going to have my own child made me feel something I've never felt before. It was a sense of fulfillment and never have I felt anything so good. Once it was done my husband started taking care of me even more vigorously and pretty soon another three weeks went by and I went in to get my ultrasound. Seeing a tiny bean almost like a dot on screen made me cry so hard. Who would have thought a dot could make me so emotional? Once the ultrasound reports came we got the first picture of our baby. And that's when the idea struck me. I was going to send a picture of the ultrasound to my mother and break the news of my pregnancy to her. But what if I do something else that would bring me satisfaction for all the times I put up with my mother-in-law? and I'm not the only one she had hurt this time. I needed to take revenge for my husband too. So I ended up forwarding the picture to my mother-in-law and sending her a text saying we also had a great picture to share and just like she did with us, we are banning her from ever coming to see her grandchildren. Then I blocked her number from everywhere. I was happy that she'd feel at least a tiny bit of hurt she gave to my husband. When my husband came back that day from work he immediately came into my room and woke me up. He asked me why I told his mom when we weren't even talking. That's when I showed him the chat and he burst out laughing. He said he finally understands why his mother called him and was frantically apologizing for her behavior. Apparently she said she's willing to do anything we want and apologize to me personally if we let her meet her grandchild in the future. That women really had no shame. She thinks an apology will fix the years of disrespect she showed us. She needed to learn her lesson. I told my husband that I don't want my child to meet her and I want our kid to grow up only with his father-in-law and us. He agreed with me and even said that we should make sure to weed out all negative things in our environment before the baby comes. Now am I the a-hole here for denying my mother-in-law grandchildren? Is it me going too far or does she deserve this? Update 1, so it's been a few weeks since I sent that pic to my mother-in-law and she started apologizing for her behavior. Since then pretty much everyone who was close to us had come to know about my pregnancy. 
My mom even called me to say she'll be moving in with me for a few months so I don't push myself to do the work around the house. She said I should take it easy and just relax and let her know if I needed anything. But I had to beg her to not come because I didn't think I could survive my mother doting around on me like I'm a 10 year old kid while dealing with the morning sickness and all the bad parts of being pregnant. My father-in-law also came by with a lot of gifts and he was just as excited as us to meet his grandson very soon. He kept asking me about future things I hadn't even had a chance to think about like which house we'd move into now that will need extra room for the nursery. I was getting overwhelmed and was glad that my husband took him away before I started vomiting because of anxiety. All the while my mother-in-law kept calling my husband and sending him texts to apologize and asking him to let her come in and see us. Honestly it's quite pathetic to see a grown-up behave like this. My husband and I still haven't talked about what we're gonna do about my mother-in-law but the way things are going on we might have to do that very soon. Update 2, so finally after my father-in-law came by again last week and told us that we should forgive my mother-in-law and let her come too, my husband and I decided that we should discuss our options and clear things out once and for all. I was also feeling bad because my father-in-law said she's been an insufferable presence around the house and constantly talks about how we're keeping her from her own blood. So last night we discussed what she had done to us. Everything, from the time when she literally shut the door on my face because I was a poor girl dating her son to the time when she sent that pic of the dinner party just to make it clear to us that we don't belong in the family was brought up. We talked about hours and kept going around in circles bringing up the same arguments. My husband said that we should just tell her that if she misses one step or utters even a single word of disrespect towards us we'll cut her off completely, but I was concerned about how she could affect our child's thinking by spouting nonsense about us. I don't want our kid to come home one day and ask us why we're bad people. Finally I got tired and just went to sleep without coming to a conclusion. That's why I wanted to ask you guys if any of you have faced a similar situation and what did you do? Update 3, so yesterday we asked my mother-in-law to come to our house. It wasn't because we missed her but because we finally came to a decision and wanted to clear things out with her. When she came, my husband went straight to the point because neither of us wanted her to be with us more than was absolutely needed. He told her that we will allow her to meet with our kid but only under supervision. She could have fixed days to spend with him and at that time either one of us or my father-in-law would stay with her. Other than that she does not talk about us to our kid and she should not think that just because she'll be seeing the kid it means we have also forgiven her. That's not going to happen for a long time and if she really wants to be a part of our family she'd have to work for it. Hopefully she doesn't do any more damage. Opinion 1, not the a-hole. You're not the a-hole here. Your mother-in-law was a worthless woman playing petty games and she sounds like a Karen to be honest. Just leave her and live your life. Opinion 2, not the a-hole. Lamau I'm just dying after reading about your revenge. Not gonna lie, it's very true that the parents that failed their children would go to any lengths just to have a claim or influence over their grandchildren. You should better keep her away before she turns your child against you too. My daughter is 14, the divorce between me and her mom is still an open wound but we try out best to make everything feel as normal as possible with the split. I remarried to my wife Isla, my daughter isn't mean, but she does not view her as a mom, which in my opinion is okay. As long as she's respectful, which she is. They do plenty together, they go out, took an interest in cooking together, watching shows together etc. I've told Isla to be patient with my daughter. If something is wrong I'd expect her to come to me and I will talk with my daughter and make sure we resolve the issue. But as far as the harsh parts of parenting, that's up to me, so the other day, my daughter came to me saying she wanted to go to her mother's, I asked why she did because she looked upset. She said to ask my wife. I called her mom and she said she'd pick her up but hasn't heard any issues from my daughter. My daughter's birthday is coming up, we are doing a quince for her. She's very excited. So Isla went to my daughter, saying that she wanted to have a quince just with us meaning without her mother or her family. When my daughter said she wanted her mom there, especially because of how big of a deal this is, and Isla was pretty much trying to force the issue and telling her that she can do one one here and just as big, my daughter asked why she's trying to leave her mom out of such an important event. And Isla got mad at her for that and accused her of being bratty and if she wants her mom so bad she should go there. I was so confused because what the f What argument even is that? First of all there's a reason she went behind my back and told my daughter, second of all she's not my kid's mother, and the more she tried to replace her the more my daughter will resent her, third of all she's never welcome to insult my daughter because of her issues and I don't know where and why she thought this would fly. I told her this and her argument was that she wanted to be noticed by my daughter and why I care so little about her feelings. I told her my daughter notices her, they go out in girls days weekly, they go out, Watch movies together etc. My daughter has been plenty inviting to her frankly I'm surprised at how well she's opened up to her but now she will have to earn her trust back.
She again asked why I keep taking my daughter's side and not meeting her in the middle I told her she's wrong here, simple as that, I could have if she didn't do it like this, I told her that if she expects me to turn on my daughter she's out of her mind and my daughter comes first in any situation. She started crying and accusing me and saying she's in second place to which I confirmed. I would never want her to put me over a kid, she left and now isn't speaking to me. I've asked my daughter if this behavior was consistent. She said that she feels like Isla makes it a point to not talk about her mom but nothing this extreme. Opinion 1, not the a-hole. OP, thank you, sincerely. From a kid who was always put after the abusive step-parents needs and desires, thank you. Sticking up for your kid was the best thing you could have done in that situation. You're doing your job as a parent by protecting your kid and putting them first. If you weren't nasty about it and you weren't degrading to your wife, then the message was correct. The child should come first in a relationship such as this. However, you now need to do your job as a husband and get to the bottom of your wife's feelings and motives. It seems like she views your daughter's mother as competition, which is not uncommon in step-parents, but is still a bad situation to allow to continue. The bottom line is that your wife needs to stop trying to exclude your daughter's mother, and needs to form her own connection with her instead. She's basically trying to replace your ex-wife in your daughter's life, and is using guilt tripping and gaslighting tactics to do so against both your daughter and you. You need to set boundaries, go over everyone's concerns and feelings, and get things sorted so your household doesn't become a toxic hellhole. Opinion 2, not the a-hole. Your daughter is 14 years old and is showing more maturity for her age. Be proud you helped raise such an accepting daughter. She's behaved with grace throughout all of this. My, 29 female, husband, 30 male, and I have liked each other since we were 11 and 12 years old. We ended up having our son E, 11 male, pretty early in life but we managed, and I think we've done pretty well for ourselves considering it all. My father-in-law, 60 male, has been staying with us since he and my mother-in-law's divorce. She got the house and he's been having a hard time finding a place so my husband offered up our guest room. He's not bad company, and my son really loves his granddad so everything has been okay up until now. My son came home from school the other day looking kind of nervous and a little upset. He is a really sensitive kid and I was worried about him starting middle school because I know how cruel kids can be. I thought that maybe he was being bullied or something like that so I sat him down and asked him about it as soon as I noticed things weren't okay. What he actually ended up telling me was that he likes a boy in his class, and he was worried about telling me or his dad about it. I told him that his dad and I couldn't care less about who he likes and that all we want is for him to be happy. He ended up coming out to both of us later that night and asked for a rainbow flag to hang up in his room so I went and got him one while he was at school the next day. My father-in-law saw me hanging the flag up on the back of my son's door and asked me what the hell I was doing. I told him that E had asked for the flag to be put in his room and my father-in-law started going on a tangent about how his grandson isn't like that. He said a whole bunch of other bullcrap too that was very offensive and downright mean and basically started outright insulting my child, so I told him if he felt that way, he needed to grab his things and get the hell out of my house because I won't tolerate his bigotry, especially not when it's directed towards my child. He packed a bag and went to my sister-in-law's house. She called my husband and told him I threw their dad out. So my husband came home and asked me what happened. I told him, and he said that his father is just from a different time and while it isn't right of him to say those things about E, I was wrong to tell him to leave because he's family. My thing is, our son is our family too. He's our child and his safety and happiness should be our priority. What kind of parents would we be if we let someone who hates who he is, live in our home? I told my husband that if his father isn't willing to grow and change then I don't want him coming anywhere near my house, and now my husband is mad at me. I don't think I overreacted here but maybe I did. Was I wrong to throw him out? 